Um, what we're going to do now is look for, uh, I suppose the best term for it is, is an expression for the pressure ratio of a gas turbine engine. So if we take the, the gas turbine and just quickly go through the uh, rate and cycle again, you know, air comes in here at 0.1. We're going to put it through the compressor, so we're going to do work on it, and we're going to compress the air. So volume decreases and its pressure increases. Then we're going to go through the combustion stage where we're going to burn it at a constant pressure. So we adding heat, okay, so we're burning fuel, adding heat, um, constant pressure. The volume increases, and then the air is going to go through the turbines and out through the exhaust. So as it goes through the turbines, it's going to expand. Okay, so its pressure is going to drop and its volume is going to increase. Um, and going through the turbines, it's going to do some work. It's going to drive the turbines, which in turn drive the compressor, and it's going to drive the aircraft forward. And then some point out here somewhere, the air is going to return back to its original state. And that's the debrating cycle. And we showed in a previous uh, screencast that during compression and expansion, as there's no heat added, it's an adiabatic process, and in an adiabatic process, uh, the expression P by V to the power of gamma is a constant. And we're going to use that expression uh, to calculate um, temperatures for, in this case, the compressor. Okay, so let's say I have an engine <coughs> with a compressor, and I know that P1 V1 to the power of gamma is equal to P2 by V2 to the power, to the power of gamma. Now, from the ideal gas laws, I know that P by V, which is the specific volume, is equal to RT. Or I could say P by V equals to MRT, and bring the M across, becomes specific volume, so it just becomes V2. Okay, so P by V is equal to RT, so P1 V1 is equal to RT1. So that means V1 is equal to RT1 over P1, and similarly V2 is equal to RT2 over P2. And I'm going to take these two values and I'm going to substitute them in there. So I have P1 is equal to V1 times the power of gamma. There's an expression for V1, and P2 is equal to V2 to the power of gamma. Well, immediately we can see we can get rid of the R's. And then, you know, I have P1 here and a P1 to the power of gamma. So if I divide that in below, I'll get P1 to the gamma minus 1, and similarly down here, if I divide that in to this guy, I'll get P2 to the power of gamma minus 1. Okay, so the R's are gone, and now we divide them in. Um, so I get P1 to the gamma minus 1 and P2 to the gamma minus 1. Okay, the obvious thing to do now is cross multiply. So I'll bring my P2 up here and my T1 down there. That's what that gives me. I can put these in brackets now. So I'll have P2 over to P1, which is the pressure ratio. Power of gamma minus 1 is equal to T2 over T1 power of gamma. Okay, so if I want to bring this back just to T2 over T1, I'd have to get the gamma root of this. And that's what I do. And I get that expression there. So if we know the pressure ratio of an engine, and we know the um, specific heat capacity, sorry, uh, the ratio of specific heat capacities are, and we know the inlet temperature, we'll be able to calculate the outlet temperature. So let's look at an example. Let's suppose we have an engine with a compression ratio of 10. So the pressure here is 10 times what it is at this point here. And let's say for our example, we're going to use the ISA conditions. Um, so the inlet pressure is going to be one bar, or uh, 1013 hectopascals, which is 1 by 1.013 by 10 to the power of 5 pascals. And then inlet temperature is 288 degrees Kelvin. Well, if the pressure ratio is 10, then the outlet pressure is going to be 10 times the inlet pressure. So P2 is 10 times what the inlet pressure was, which is uh, 1.013 by 10 to the power of 6. It's gone from 5 uh, to 6. That's the outlet pressure of the compressor. But 
if you want to look at the uh, temperature uh, at the outlet of the compressor, we'll have to use our formula. Well, we know the compression ratio, so the difference between P2 and P1 is 10. The ratio of specific capacities, well, for air, that's 1.4, and we know what our inlet temperature is, 288 degrees Kelvin. So if I substitute those values in, I get 10 times, sorry, 10 to the power of 1.4 minus 1 all over 1.4 is equal to T2 over 288. I cross multiply and get a value for T2. So if I go to my calculator, okay, I can uh, punch in the numbers and go at 288 heat multiplied by 10 to the power of power of, and that is a fraction, and that's 1.4 minus 1. And if I press equals here on my sharp calculator, I should get a value of 556 degrees uh, Kelvin. So I can say T2 is equal to 556 degrees Kelvin.